So our first step in the design process is going to be creating what I call a style guide. And we're going to be building that style guide right inside of Adobe XD. So the first thing you want to do is just launch up Adobe XD. You can go to letsxd.com and download this software for free. So you can just go to file new and this will pull up the little preset manager here. You can see how you can create different preset document sizes, but they do have custom sizes over here. If you want a custom size, you just punch in the values here and then you click the icon or you can just use this preset. We're going to be using the web 1366 by 768 preset. So let's just go ahead and click that and then just go ahead and click the document and you can see that will go ahead and launch that preset for you. Inside of the program here, we're going to be creating our style guide first. So what we're going to do is we're just going to grab the rectangle tool here at the top left and we're just going to draw out a simple rectangle. The size here really doesn't matter at this point. Just go ahead and draw a rectangle. Hold down shift to get a perfect square there and then just let go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the fill and the border properties of this rectangle and we're going to set the border to a semi-transparent or about a 50% gray which is close to where we're at. We're just going to go a little bit uh, higher here. And then the fill we're going to set to our style guide color. So I'm just going to set this as a solid red for right now. And I'm going to come down here to the border property and I'm going to increase the size here to five. So we have a five pixel border. And the reason we add a gray border is just so we can see that color in contrast with a neutral gray color to help us kind of see any contrast issues that may exist. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and duplicate this. So we can just select that object, hold down the option key, and while we're dragging over, just move it over. Now I'm gonna, just gonna add maybe 32 pixels in between these guys, and then repeat this a couple more times. And you can see that you'll get this automatic snapping that happens inside of XD where it turns pink, and that sort of is showing you the previous bound. So that's kind of nice to be able to just quickly drag these guys across. We're gonna create five boxes like so. Now these five boxes are going to correspond to your uh, design's color scheme. So you have to come up with the color scheme for your design and it's something that you want to do beforehand. You don't want to be designing your whole web page and then trying to change the colors at last. Again, that's why we start on paper first, we sketch out our design first, we come up with our colors first and then we design around that. We can always make small modifications but you want to make sure you have that color scheme set first. Now, there's a few resources out there that'll help you create color schemes. I'm just gonna show you one, and it is on a website called Adobe Cooler. So let's navigate over there. You can see here, I'm on the website. It's called color.adobe.com. It used to be spelled K-U-L-E-R, but they've recently just changed it uh, back to color. And this is a website that just helps you build color schemes. Now, if you're a natural artist and you have the ability to mix colors and create awesome color schemes, go for it. You can just select your own color swatches right inside of XD and pick the color scheme. This website helps those of us that struggle a little bit more with color, and we can use some basic color principles to help us build color schemes that work well together. So you can see over here on the left, we have analogous color schemes. We have monochromatic color schemes. We have triads. We have complementary compound shades etc etc so what we can do here is you can go ahead and select any one of these it works by choosing the base color here in the middle and then the color scheme is sort of built off the base color and you can always drag these color swatches around here as well to sort of customize these as needed another nice feature here is you can come and pull up an image so you can come over here and say extract from image a common thing people actually do is they take pictures of butterflies because butterflies have these really bright vibrant colors and their wings and whatnot and you can upload a picture of a butterfly and it will extract the color scheme from that so I'll just show you a quick little sample of this my desktop I just have this picture right here of this butterfly butterfly wing and I can just go ahead and drag and drop it in here to upload this and you can see that XD will sort of not XD but Adobe color will sort of analyze this and pull out the common colors and it saves me that color scheme right up here in this nice little swatch. So that's kind of a fun process you can take as well. Now I'm not going to be using this. I'm going to use one extra feature which is over here in the Explore tab. So in the Explore tab you can find color schemes that other designers are creating 
and you can vote and rank these things. So something that's kind of fun over here is you can just do a search. So let's say I want to do maybe a winter color scheme. So I can type in winter, the keyword, and I'll get all sorts of color schemes that sort of have that winter theme, if you will. Maybe I want to do, uh, let's say, Easter. So we're probably going to get a lot of pastels right here, right? Yep, so you can see all the pastels. And then if you find one you like, you can just simply click on the color scheme. And this gives you all of the different hex values for each of those colors. You can copy them, add them to your library, all sorts of things. But this is a nice little website for you to come in and just find a nice color scheme that you think is going to work for your website design. So I already have a color scheme in mind, so I'm just going to go ahead and add my colors manually to XD next. So I'm going to select my first color swatch here inside of XD and come over to my fill color. I'm going to manually type in that hex color that I have saved. So mine is B zero B E B F and I'll go ahead and hit return. You can see that kind of gives me a gray. I'll come over here to my second one and I'm just going to rinse and repeat this process for all of my colors. My next color is delete this default color here is five A eight C eight seven gives me kind of this teal color. Come over to my third color scheme here. Repeat the process here. This one is F two uh, B five six B. Kind of a light orange. This next color here is going to be a really light gray. F two F zero F zero. And then this final color here is going to be kind of a light red sort of color. We'll change the fill here to F two A B nine B. Okay, so there are my color schemes. Now, what Adobe Experience Designer can do for me is it can actually manage these colors inside of what it calls an asset, which is very, very helpful because you can kind of think of an asset as a global symbol. If I change that, let's say I have a color like this orange and I make a whole bunch of elements on my page orange and I want to update those. Well, I don't want to go update every single color everywhere. So what I can do is I can go update the master asset color and it will automatically propagate through every object that uses that color. So let's go ahead and set that up. So we're gonna click on our first one here. You can just come into this and you can see over here you have these colors and you can just click the plus button and it will automatically add that color. Then we'll come to this one and we can just add that color, come to this one, add that color, come to this one, add that color, come to this one and add that color. And it actually added the border there as well. So this is the border. Uh, whoops, we could delete this one if we don't want the border. So we're just left with our five colors. And there you go. So we have our five colors set up as linked assets inside of our Adobe project. So now let's go ahead and set up the similar type of deal, but we're going to be using typography. This way we can have our typography, our font faces, our font styles all set up in symbols so that we ever change those, it will propagate again throughout our project. So we're gonna come over here and let's just grab the type tool. So we're gonna grab the text tool here. Come over here and click and let's just call this one a heading one. And then let's go ahead and click down here and we'll call this one a heading two. And we're just going to create, we're going to create three headings. We'll call this one a heading three. And then also we'll come down here. Whoops, I just deleted that. And I keep hitting return on these, make sure they don't have multiple lines. There we go. And then lastly, let's create a paragraph. So if you have the type tool and you click and drag, you can create a paragraph that has a fixed width and just paste in some text here. So it doesn't matter if it's lorem ipsum, but just type out some text or copy and paste some text that you can use for your paragraph style. I'm just gonna hurry and copy and paste some from the internet quickly. So I have pasted in just some random text here. And now let's go ahead and highlight all three of these. And we're gonna use the align tools. So up here at the top right, you can see you have some alignment and grouping tools. So I'm just going to align them all to the left edge. And then I'm going to distribute them equally this way as well. So you can see when I distribute equally, that just equally spaces all those guys out. Now let's go ahead and change the actual style. So for the heading one, again, this is where you can sort of come up with your own sizes and whatever you need for these. But for my heading one tag, I'm going to go with a 48 and it's going to be a bold font. 
and I'm gonna use the font uh, Avenir Next, which is my latest favorite font. Uh, I'm really liking this font the last little while. So that's gonna be my heading one. For the heading two tag down here, uh, for the sizes, this is up to you, but what I did is I just did 1.5 so what I did is I went with 48 divided by 1.5 and that gives me with 32. So for this heading two, I'm gonna go with a 32. Same thing here, I want this guy to be Avenir next. And you can decide if you wanna have them bold or not, but I'm gonna make these all of my headings bold. So that will be bold. And then this one here for my last one, it's just gonna be 48 divided by two. So this is gonna be a 24 and bold as well. So those are my three heading sizes. Whoops, I gotta switch this one to my Avenir next. And then we can add character styles for these as well. Notice here over on the left, we have a character style. So I'm gonna add in a character style for that one. I'm gonna add in a character style for that one, a character style for that one. And then my paragraph is also going to be Avenir next, but it's just going to be in a regular font and it's gonna be sitting at 20 pixels. So we'll go ahead and add a character style for the paragraph. So now I have my four character styles for my typography and that's uh, looking great. If you have more than one typography sets, maybe you have a different set for your headings versus your paragraphs or your menus or things like that. You just go ahead and add as many as you need over here in your character styles. Now the last thing we're going to do over here on this page is just design in our simple button style. We could add a lot of things over here in this, what we're calling our style guide, but we're just going to add some buttons next. So these buttons specifically will be used in our menu and then also anywhere else we would have a button on our page. So let's go ahead and design one of those. So we are just going to grab our rectangle tool and just draw a little rectangle over here and let's manipulate a few properties. You can see that we have a border property. So we can set this guy to like 100 and that's just gonna round off those corners, uh, make it a rounded rectangle. And then we can adjust our fill. So I'm gonna take my border and I'm gonna set it to this color right here. Remember, this is our component. So I can just use my eyedropper tool and set it right to that. And then I can set my fill. And I'm gonna set my fill right to that color. And that's automatically updated. Now I'm gonna illustrate what happens if I change this. So watch what happens if I come over to this color. Remember this color over here is part of our uh, color asset. So if I edit this color and change it, notice how the two components that are inheriting that cutter color automatically update. So that's again, kind of the benefit of using those styles. So we have that set up like so. Let's go ahead and just type some text in here so we can kind of see this as if it was a button some text and we'll just kind of center this. You can use the smart guides there to center um, for the text color here. Let's go ahead and make it bold. And we will also set the fill to white or something like that. Okay, so there is a basic button and we're just gonna leave this button right here for now. Uh, we can of course duplicate this. We could hold down option and drag this down here and we could create a color variant. So I could maybe select this and change the fill with my eyedropper tool to this one. And then we'll create one more color variant. Let's grab this one and drag it down here. And on this one, we're gonna turn off the fill, just leave it with the border. And then for the text color fill, let's set that to, well, we'll just set that, I don't know, just something dark for now. Maybe we have a secondary button that kind of looks like that. So an outlined version of the button. In fact, on this outline, we probably want that border color set to a little bit darker, something like that. So there's our three variants for our simple button. So we're gonna call this page our style guide. So we can come over here to this artboard and we're just going to double click here and call this our style guide. And that's pretty much it. So now we have our style guide in place. Our next video, we're going to learn how to do a basic wireframe inside of Adobe XD. And then we will finally do our final design as well.